Hey everybody, Leah Klett here with the Christian Post. My guest today is Duck Dynasty star Corey Robertson. She is also the producer of the film The Blind, now streaming on Great American Pure Flix. Congratulations on the success of The Blind. This has just done so remarkably well with a theatrical run and now it's on Great American Pure Flix. What do you think accounts for the success of this story, which is which is about your family? Well, thank you so much. Yeah, it was so um, just exciting to see people watch it and love it because it was a true labor of love. It was our first feature film for our production company, Tread Lively, and about our family. So it felt like really important that we get it right. And um, so it was such a great, you know, exciting time for us to kind of just get it out there and let people see it. And I think that one, we just have the greatest people that love our family and have followed our family through all of Duke Dynasty and, and since, you know, so I think that's a great part. They follow us on our podcast and listen to So I think a lot of people kind of knew our story. Um, Phil and Kay have been really open and honest about their life and the difficulties and the hard times of their life. Um, it's read it in some of their books, but to see it on a screen is a whole different thing. And um, I think that, you know, people, I always say this about when our show came out, Duck Dynasty, it said more about what people were searching for, what people wanted, you know, just to see a family that's real and that has faith and that comes together and that is not perfect, that doesn't try to pretend like we have it all together, but at the end of the day, can we'll sit around a dinner table and, you know, thank God for what we have. And we tried to show that in the movie just to say like, look, our family, you know, did not end up here on Duck Dynasty without our, you know, our share of ups and downs and hard times. And there was this moment that it almost all fell apart when Phil and Kay, you know, their life, when they were separated, they almost did not come back together, but for Jesus, but for God and him coming into their lives, everything changed. What enables your family to be so honest about some of the broken parts of your story in an effort to highlight God's faithfulness when the world can be so critical and so cruel? I've always just respected so much how you guys are like, well, this is this is who we are. We don't try to sugarcoat anything. Yeah, I think you said it right there. It's it's God's faithfulness to us. And we, um, when Phil, we went to Phil to talk to him about doing this movie because it's really, you know, his, his and Kay's story and he shows the hardest parts of his life and so that's tough to put it out there on the screen and he said from day one he was like if it impacts one person if one person changes their life and gives their life to Jesus because of my story because of the darkest parts of my story I'll do it it'll be worth it and it absolutely has been one of the greatest rewards has just been to read the comments and read the emails that have come in that have told us the life change that has happened in people's life after seeing this film. Can you share some of those stories? I love hearing that. I, I talked to Phil, I think it was last year, you told me about baptisms in his backyard, which was just yes. so Oh my goodness. I cannot, I, I wish we had knew how many thousands of people have been baptized in that river right behind Phil and Kate's house. Cause um, that has been, you know, pre anyone knowing who we were, Phil loves to baptize people and has done it right there in his backyard for years and years and years. And after the film, we heard about baptisms happening. People set up, you know, after people would head straight to the church or head straight to a body of water right after seeing the movie and, um, have baptism. I think one, um, one group, I think they had like 27 baptisms, like right after the film, everyone just kind of continued and went somewhere and worshiped. And, um, a lot of people were baptized. So that was really special. And there was so many stories of people, because this is a lot about alcoholism. A lot of this, the, of Phil's life story, you know, centers around the problem of alcohol in his life. And so a lot of people wrote in that their, you know, husbands were alcoholics and they took him, them to this film. One that I love the most, she said that her husband had been an alcoholic for 17 years. He never goes to the movie with her. She convinced him to come to the movie with him because he loves Phil and had loved our show. And she said he reached over and held her hand for the first time in years while they were watching the movie. And I just read that and just bawled because I just, you know, you just imagine this could save could save families, it could save marriages, um, and it could save lives. Wow. 
So Corey, as a producer on this film, how were your own views of redemption, family, unity? How were those changed or impacted or what was that emotional experience like? Wow, that's a great question. I think because I've lived this and known Phil and Kay for so many years, um, one of the things I think that Kay, you know, taught me early on is just forgiveness and how the impact and the power of forgiveness. And then I think another thing, I think this, this narrative that we have in the world that like people can't change, like yeah. once you're this, you are that. And um, seeing their life, seeing Phil's life, it showed me early on that like, oh, people can change. They can and they do. And you you can hold out hope for that. And even in our lives, you know, in our marriage, there's things that you're just like, oh, you know, early things in your early marriage where you're just think, oh, this will never change. This is just how it's going to be. And then you're like, oh, all of a sudden, you know, you as, as, as life goes on, people change. It's just a very simple, small thing. Willie's a great cook. He cooks for our family all the time, but early on, you know, he was busy in life or whatever. Didn't cook near as much, but now I'm like, oh, I have this amazing. So I'll, I'll post that and be like, oh, Willie's the cook and he's amazing. Like, but he didn't always do it. So you women who like want your husband to cook, hold out hope that might change. <laughs> Corey, you are part of such an incredible family. You are a mother, you're a grandmother. What advice do you have for parents who want to raise children who know and fear and love the Lord in a culture that doesn't really support that? Mm, I think we need to teach our kids to be bold. You know, there's so many scriptures about being strong and courageous. Um, whenever our kids were little, I remember a Bible study I was in one time and I actually wrote a book um, titled this because of this moment. I was in a Bible study and um, the woman said, what do you, what values do you want to instill in your kids? Pick two. And that night I chose strong and kind. So strength and kindness, because I thought they need to be strong in this world. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be things that are going to sway them and knock them. And I remember just feeling like envisioning this for my children, like just grow their roots deep, you know, so that when the tough times come, their roots are deep. They're the strong tree that's planted um, by the living water that the scripture talks about in Psalms one. And so, um, yeah, I think, I think you, you need to, um, shore your kids up for that, have them ready to be strong and know that they, they can be strong in the Lord. And how do you handle criticism that comes at your family, especially if it, if it is targeted at your children, how does your family deal with that? That's a tough one. So I think that personally, I'm, a, I'm, I think I'm pretty immune to it. I kind of just am like, you know, don't read it. Don't worry about it. I talked to, we talked to our kids so many times from an early age, from whenever we very first started the show, the show Duck Dynasty and just said, like, you only need to listen to the people who know you and love you because, and to God, you know, it's like this relationship and this, which you can put your arms around because there are going to be people that are going to throw things at you. Um, but Sadie just went through a time, a, a couple of, of uh, she went through a couple of really strong criticisms actually on social media that mm -hmm. really hurt her it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt you know um and so we just talk a lot about it and talk about what what we know to be true what's really important and I think we have to you know in humility go before the Lord and say hey is there something here that I need to learn or I need to hear or um, speak to people that are close to you and can can give you advice in that way. So that's kind of, we just circle it back in and and look to God and look to one another um, for, for where we get our wisdom and our strength. And um, those people who are on the outside that speak in, you know, they don't really know our lives and really know us in that way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of your daughter, you guys are speaking at Prestonwood Baptist Church in April for your preg annual pregnancy fundraiser. What can you tell me about that? We are so excited to be there. We actually, um, I've spoken there before and got to know some of the people there. This is a great church. And so when they came and asked us to do this, of course, adoption and foster care and all, pregnancy and all that is, you know, we love, we love family. We love big family. It's close to our heart. And so we said yes and are just excited to be there. Sadie and I will get to do it together, which is always fun. I love to do things with her. And um, so, yeah, we're excited. What fosters your passion for life and publicly declaring this passion for life? Um, well, you know, we have um, adopted children as part of our family. That's what made up our family and made our family complete 
complete. And so we're so thankful for that. And um, just, you know, we just have a belief that all life matters, that we are made in the image of God and every single life matters and has value and worth. And um, Sadie's whole entire ministry is called Live Original because whenever she was little, Willie called her the original. And it's just that idea that we are all made original. We're all made unique and um, God fashioned each and every one of us. And so I think that, you know, there's nothing more important than, than that. Absolutely. All right, Corey. So now the blind is available everywhere. It's streaming on great American pure Flix. What is your hope for this film as it goes out to the world, really reaching an even wider audience than it had before? Yeah, we're so um, grateful for Great American Pure Flix for just um, bringing this movie in because, like I said, I think it really does have the power to impact marriages and and then families and then which impacts generations to come. I know Phil and Kay's um, life changed and when Phil got baptized that day and Kay turned her life to Jesus, that life change has changed not only their life, but our life and our kids' lives and will impact generations to come. And so um, I do think this this film with Through the Power of God has the power to do that. And so, yeah, just more people to see it. That's the goal.